How Titanium is Made, the Metal for the Ages Have you ever noticed how titanium seems to show up everywhere, from rockets and airplanes to hip replacements and luxury watches? It's strong, elegant, and somehow both futuristic and ancient at the same time. But here's the strange part. Titanium doesn't come shiny and ready-made. It starts deep underground as a dusty gray mineral that looks like something you'd sweep off your garage floor. So how does this dull rock become one of the most extraordinary materials on Earth? Let's strip it down to the atomic roots and see how humans learned to tame the toughest metal around. Welcome to the history of everyday things, where we explore the big stories hiding inside everyday materials. Before we go deeper, hit like and subscribe so you don't miss more stories behind the ordinary things that quietly rule our world. From Earth to Ore, the Hidden Metal Titanium might sound exotic, but it's surprisingly common, the ninth most abundant element in Earth's crust. You'll find traces of it in beach sand, mountain rocks, even paint pigments. The catch? Titanium almost never appears in pure form. It's obsessed with oxygen, clings to it like your ex clings to your Netflix password, so it's usually trapped in chemical compounds. Most titanium is mined from two minerals, ilmenite and rutile. These ores are dug from open pit mines using enormous excavators, mostly in Australia, South Africa, and Canada. After mining, the ore is crushed, washed, and sorted to concentrate the titanium-rich minerals. So yes, that sleek metal used in jet engines starts its life as a pile of gray sand. But here's where the real transformation begins. The Kroll Revolution, Turning Rock into Metal Extracting titanium is no small feat. It's stubborn, the kind of element that doesn't let go of oxygen without a fight. In fact, it took until the 1940s for metallurgist William J. Kroll to figure out how to do it efficiently. His method, still used today, is known as the Kroll process, basically industrial alchemy. Here's the simplified version. First, the ore is converted into titanium tetrachloride, or TiCl4, a volatile liquid that sounds like something a Marvel villain would use. To make it, the ore is mixed with chlorine gas and a carbon source like coke, then heated to about 1,000 degrees Celsius. The chlorine bonds with the titanium, forming TiCl4 vapor, while the impurities stay behind as solids. Next comes purification. The titanium tetrachloride is distilled until it's squeaky clean. Finally, this liquid is reduced with magnesium or sodium in a vacuum chamber. The result? Titanium sponge, a porous gray mass that looks nothing like metal but is pure titanium. It's the metallurgical equivalent of baking a cake from smoke and somehow ending up with a solid. From sponge to strength, melting and forging. Titanium sponge might be pure, but it's not yet usable. To turn it into the shiny, strong metal we recognize, it needs to be melted and refined. And that's where the magic happens. Manufacturers use methods like vacuum arc remelting, or VAR, and electron beam melting, or EBM, to fuse the sponge. Imagine a vacuum furnace glowing white-hot while a massive electric arc liquefies the metal. That's how titanium goes from brittle sponge to dense, flawless ingot. These ingots are then cast into giant blocks, ready to be forged, rolled, or extruded into new shapes. Sheets, rods, wires, tubes, whatever the application calls for. Industrial presses flatten or stretch the hot titanium like metal taffy, creating uniform grains and stronger structures. Think of it as kneading metal dough, only at 1700 degrees Celsius. Would you trust a metal that starts as a sponge? Drop a yes or no below. Alloying is the super metal upgrade. Pure titanium is impressive, 
light, strong, and corrosion resistant, but scientists quickly learned it could do even more. By mixing in other metals, they could fine-tune its personality. During melting, small amounts of aluminum and vanadium are added to create titanium alloys like TI-6AL4V, the superstar of aerospace materials. These alloys combine low weight with immense strength and heat resistance. In other words, pure titanium is a solo artist. Alloyed titanium, that's a rock band. Aluminum adds range, vanadium brings power, and the result is a performance worthy of the sky. That's why your airplane's engines, car parts, and even some bicycles rely on titanium alloys. They're strong enough for rockets, but light enough to keep you airborne. Machining and finishing, the final touch. Once forged and alloyed, titanium still needs shaping, and that's easier said than done. Titanium is so tough that it laughs at standard cutting tools. It resists heat, dulls blades, and generally behaves like it's trying to outsmart the machine. Engineers use high-end carbide tools, low cutting speeds, and cooling fluids to prevent damage. Even then, machining titanium is like sculpting granite with a butter knife. Slow, precise, and unforgiving. After shaping, titanium components are polished, coated, or heat-treated depending on their job. Medical implants get a mirror finish and special surface treatments to help bone cells bond. Aerospace parts undergo heat hardening to endure extreme stress. Every piece of titanium, from jet turbines to dental screws, is fine-tuned for perfection. The price of perfection Environmental challenges. Titanium may be durable, but making it takes a serious environmental toll. The Kroll process uses chlorine gas, magnesium, and high temperatures, all energy-hungry and waste-intensive. Mining and refining consume large amounts of electricity, producing byproducts that must be carefully handled. But here's the good news. Titanium's long lifespan and recyclability balance the equation. Many titanium parts, especially in aerospace, are recycled and remelted, reducing the need for new raw materials. Once made, titanium refuses to quit. It resists corrosion so well it can outlast most steel. And researchers are working on cleaner ways to produce it. One promising method, the FFC Cambridge process, uses electrolysis to extract titanium directly from ore. It could make the process cheaper, cleaner, and far less energy intensive. It's not mainstream yet, but it's a glimpse of a greener future. So yes, titanium is tough to make, but it's also tough to beat. Why go through all this trouble? After all this effort, you might wonder, why not just use steel or aluminum? The answer lies in titanium's unmatched balance of strength, weight, and resilience. It's about 45% lighter than steel, but nearly as strong. It shrugs off corrosion, laughs at salt water, and keeps its cool in temperatures that would melt other metals. That's why it's the go-to choice for airplanes, submarines, spacecraft, and medical implants. And beyond the lab coats and jet engines, titanium also has style. Its natural silver-gray finish and ability to form colorful oxide layers make it a favorite for jewelry and luxury watches. It's industrial strength with aesthetic flair. If steel is the muscle, titanium is the athlete. The big picture, more than a medal. Titanium's journey from sand to spaceship isn't just a story of metallurgy, it's a story of human persistence. It took decades of trial, error, and innovation to turn an uncooperative mineral into the backbone of modern technology. Titanium represents what happens when curiosity meets chemistry, when people look at a stubborn element and think, yeah, we can work with that. From the bones in our bodies to the bones of a rocket, titanium holds its ground in every extreme we can throw at it. It's not just strong, it's a symbol of ingenuity. Recap and closing. 
let's rewind. Titanium begins as a mineral locked in Earth's crust. Through the curl process, it becomes a sponge, then molten metal, then a perfectly engineered alloy that powers everything from jet engines to pacemakers. Its production isn't simple, but that's what makes it remarkable. So the next time you spot a titanium watch or hear about a spacecraft hurtling through the atmosphere, remember, it all started with gray sand, a lot of heat, and a very stubborn element. Titanium truly is the metal for the ages, one that proves just how far human ingenuity can stretch. Thanks for watching The History of Everyday Things. If you've got an idea for our next episode, drop it in the comments. We'd love to explore it. And as always, keep your curiosity switched on before it oxidizes.